Hello. Here we are again on another wonderful Sunday. And oh, this smells lovely. I'm putting on some. Oh my God, I can't even read it. The, the label is so faded. Anyways, I'm putting on some oil. I like to put a drop on the wrists. Breathe it in and put it in the field. You can do that with any oil. Gets it right into your energy field. Well, I wanted to share a manifestation that I created last week. I was in Sedona. Love Sedona, Arizona. Absolutely love it. Those of you that have been there, I know many of you have. The energy vortexes and the energy, it just recharges you. It's like being plugged in all the time. Personally, when I'm there, I feel like I don't even need sleep, that things are just happening. And there's always magical things that happen, new people you meet, connections to be made that are amazing. I met my granddaughter in Sedona, who drove up from Cal no, not California, Colorado. And I met her and a few friends there and amazing hiking and being in meditation in these beautiful vortices, which have so much energy in them. And each one of these locations has a different energy. So people always say, well, what's your favorite vortex? I don't know if I have one. There's a galactic one that feels so really wonderful. There's a very male-oriented one, which feels very electrical and strong. There is a vortex that is very feminine, which is very nurturing and all of that. And there's just so many different places. And you'd have to be half dead not to feel it. Even people that don't normally feel energy, when you go into this, it's like, oh my God, it's beautiful. So I got to have a little time out and boy, did I need it. I hadn't traveled for a year and a half. And those of you that know me know that I travel quite a bit when I can, when I get the chance. And this just presented itself to me through my granddaughter. And it was like, absolutely. So, um, it is quite an experience. And whenever somebody needs to shift where they're at in life, say you're going through something and you feel like you're stuck or whatever, visiting there is going to push you into the next piece of your purpose or mission or whatever you want to call it. It does. It pushes you to go to the next place. And I often feel like all this energy just pours into my crown and into my body. I'm downloaded. There's new nonverbal pieces from spirit realm saying, go this way, do that. And um, it's always a boost. It's always a boost. I feel like when I'm there, I don't even need to sleep because it just feels like you're constantly perpetuating this amazing energy. And I you know, prior to COVID, I would take groups there at least once a year, sometimes twice. And it is a fabulous way, especially for people that are just trying to learn about energy and trying to feel. It is a great way to introduce yourself to spiritual journeys. So look for them in the future when I'm offering them amazing, amazing things happen there you're able to feel deeper, you're able to see things you perhaps, you know, don't normally see. And all your sensory gets really heightened. So it definitely is a really good place to open up, to trust your intuition. And besides all of that, you have all kinds of healers there and readers and they used to have a gazillion new age stores where you buy all crystals and they've cut down some over the years, but there still are some stores there. And uh, my favorite is just being on the land, being on the land. The sun is out, it's warm. So I just wanted to tell you that was a dream of mine to go back 
now. <laughs> and here I didn't do anything consciously to create except for sending it out and I didn't want to go alone. And here my granddaughter opened the door for that without knowing. So when you hold on to your visions and your dreams, things happen. Remember that. So I hope you're taking action steps to manifest in the direction and um, desires that you have to create. And for you, maybe it's not traveling physically there. Maybe it's traveling with your mind or meditating and pretending you're going there. So whatever it is, make it yours. Okay, I have a lot of cards that wanted to come. I have six decks that wanted to come today. So I said, all right, I'll do less talking and more into the decks. I'm gonna do the ones that, two of the ones that I had last week, the Soul's Journey Lesson Cards with James Von Prague. So on the 30th, the last Sunday, we had five Sundays this month. The last week. What is the message for everyone watching? Happiness. I am aware that being happy means that I am on the right path. And my coach, Mary Morsey, from way back, would say, what would you love? because if it brings you joy, it's your path. And this is what this reminds me of. And the green on here is really about opening your heart for your heart's desire. And the blue is, you know, the throat chakra is your life purpose. So how can you actualize that purpose? So let's see what he has to say about happiness. Before incarnating, your soul created a blueprint for you to follow in this physical dimension. The easiest way to chart this path, path is to follow your bliss. Life is full of choices and opportunities. Spirit, in its infinite wisdom, has given you the emotion of happiness to guide you. The signposts are always there, but you have to acknowledge them and have the courage to follow them. As you hold this card, do you feel that you are living a life of happiness? In what areas are you lacking? It may be time to be truthful what your soul self, with your soul self. Um, listen to its language and intuit. If there is someone or a scenario holding you back from experiencing complete happiness, even though it may be painful to admit, you need to be completely truthful. Be mindful of how happiness will affect every aspect of your life on the path. Also intuit if there is someone in your life who needs to be brought into the awareness of happiness. This is important to recognize as well. Others will want to learn from you and whether you admit it or not, you can be their teacher. When you are filled with love and compassion, not only do you bring happiness into your life, but you lead others by example. Be the light. And so the other thing this reminds me of is something that I did learn in um, coaching that Mary Morrissey said. She said, notice what you're noticing. So if you're noticing your heart's full and things are open, you're on the right path. If you're noticing you're down and out, and you're not very happy, something has to adjust and change. The other deck we used last week was Mary Magdalene or, or Magdalene Oracle Guidebook by Tony Carmine Salerno. So on April 30th, what is the group message? Eternal Embrace. This is a couple that have the violet flame and the flame itself around them. Eternal Embrace. As I look at this, they're so connected. They're within this circle of light, and it reminds me of the violet flame. And for those of you that don't know, the violet flame is a gift that St. Germain, who's one of the master teachers, gave us as a way to burn through things that no longer support us down here. Everything in the universe consists of complementary opposites. So there is no point in wishing that everyone around you was like you. Accept this universal truth and you will avoid further disappointment. 
Every time you identify a quality in another that you don't like, pause for a moment and identify the same quality within you. Boy, isn't that the truth? If you have identified that quality in another, then it is sure to exist also in you. If you can't see it within yourself, it is simply because you have repressed the quality. Every quality you think you possess comes with an opposite quality attached to it. You can't have one without having the other. Read and reflect on the following sets of qualities and feelings listed on the next page several times a day. As you go, you may want to add more quality. Slowly reflect on one, each one until you are able to see each of these qualities within yourself. When you are able to own and love each one equally, you will have made a major breakthrough, which leads to a newfound sense of balance and well-being. So the qualities and feelings to own and love, positive and negative, friendly, not friendly, happy, sad, peaceful, aggressive, strong, weak, trusting, fearful, confused, clear-headed, spiritual, physical, responsible, irresponsible, considerate, inconsiderate, angry and calm, feminine and masculine, kind and cruel. Wow, those are some great qualities. And I agree. You know, when it, that's one of the first things I do when somebody's bugging me and I'm like, oh, look at that. If somebody's bothering me with something they're doing, I bring it straight back to me. When's the time that I did that? Or am I still doing it? Oh my God, that's who I used to be. And that's why we have such a strong reaction to it. So this week, look for those. Okay, it says the crumbling. What are you clinging on to? And this is Work Your Light from Rebecca Campbell. What are you holding on to? Wow, it's an amazing card. Darkness on the outside with lightning and then a door opening. And on the other side is pure, a garden, beautiful light, all of that. Okay. There is a shift happening right now where anything inauthentic can no longer survive. Relationships, jobs, social structures, anything built on shaky ground is destined to tumble down. It's happening to bring you back home to who you truly are, both individually and societal. So you can live a life that is in alignment with who you truly are. When you're in the thick of it, it can feel like a personal attack from the universe. Have faith because the difficult times will be your defining moments. You will be reborn in the fire. You're being called to surrender. Stop trying to hold on altogether. To loosen your grip, to let the crumbling occur. It may be difficult at first, but in the end, the sooner you let go, the sooner the rebirthing will occur. What are you trying to hold together? What are you doing your best to avoid? How are you trying to pretend everything is okay? Boy, those questions are some good ones because we all hold on to something, right? You have what it takes to allow what is falling away to tumble and fall. Once the tower has crumbled, you will be able to rebuild your home on solid ground with mighty foundations and a view that is so magnificent that it will take your breath away each new morn. Kali, the goddess of destruction and the black Madonna, are with you now. Lay it all on their altar. They can hold it all. The question is, what are you clinging to for fear of nothing coming to take its place? Wow. Big one. We kind of have a theme going here. It's almost like if you want the happiness, you need to recognize that everything can be different. You know, there's polarity. And what do we want to let go of? So big ones. Next one also by Rebecca Campbell, the Starseed Oracle. So what do you have to say to this group for April, not April, May 30th, sorry. Messenger, serious energy, bringing harmony and balance. 
serious as in the planet or star system serious oh so this is a star being that's coming out of the skies with open hands beautiful colors here the messenger God, these words are so small in here. Sometimes you got to really bring it in the light. You're part of a lineage of souls who have dedicated their lifetimes to the upliftment of the planet, to returning time and again to seed the light, the crystalline ones, the ones who are here to plant the sacredness of life back in. Boy, isn't that the truth with what we're all going through right now? what this planet is going through as it tries to make the jump. To honor both the sacred feminine and masculine, to usher deep reverence back in. Many ascended masters are thought to be connected to the energy of Sirius, often appearing as a shade of blue. They hold the frequency of pure love and are here to help the masculine and feminine exist in harmony to ensure greater balance, to help to see that we're all connected and that the masculine and feminine energies exist within us all. You're being called to bring about this balance and harmony between the masculine and feminine, to be a guardian of harmony and balance on earth. Think of the whales traveling around the globe, sharing love through their healing vibrational song. Their unique notes send balance and harmony to every corner of the planet. If you haven't heard personally the song of the whale, Google it. Oh my God, it just brings you to tears. It's a, definitely a remembrance. A rebalancing of the masculine and feminine is occurring worldwide. It's a surging of the sacred within us all, a returning of the sacred union within a rekindling of heaven and earth. You can begin to bring harmony and balance by meeting it in your own life. The ripples will flow from there. You can honor and balance the sacred masculine and feminine energies within yourself and others. And boy, is that true. You know, years ago, it used to be everything was women coming to all the workshops and everything and the men wouldn't come because a lot of men expressed to, or some men expressed to me that every time they go everything's the divine feminine or women saying it's all up to us now there were races many many lifetimes ago that were the amazonian women that were not so nice to men very big strong almost like um wonder woman's race and all of that and then there are men that want to rule by force and all of that. It's not either or. It's coming together to use the gifts of the feminine and the gifts of the masculine and to bring them together. So your star seed soul inquiry is, how are you being called to bring harmony to your life or the planet? How are you being called to honor the sacred masculine and feminine within you? So our goal as light beings is to bring the balance in within us. We know this, but many times we forget. And I think that is why we have so many people confused about their sex or, you know, how they want to be defined and all of that, because we are seeing more beings being born that are, are almost androgynous beings because we're supposed to get away from this. So the messenger. The next one is the Divine Animal Oracle by Stacy DeMarco. So what is the animal that would like to assist us from today, the second to the last day of May, moving into the first week of June? The deer. Oh, isn't that pretty? So it is the deer in the background, and it's a woman dressed with a headdress of a deer. You know, in the pagan times when people were honoring this and they would dress up at certain 
pagan holidays with the headdresses. That's beautiful. And there is an honoring going on. The, the deer that is timid and shy is in the background and is honoring the goddess here that has a piece of the deer. So let's see what this is all about. Power. You are enough. You are worthy. Ethics are a part of building genuine personal power. Stand strong in front of bullies. Hold your boundaries tenaciously. Be proud of what you have achieved, but humble in your outlook. And I think that's the message of the deer. The deer stands back and is very humble. It says, gosh, all right. It tells, oh, that's a myth. We don't want to go to the myth. Let's go to the animal. Deer are magnificent creatures that have long been part of life of humans. The hunting of deer is one of the most ancient and continual of all animal hunting, which is confirmed by drawings. Deer offers meat, leather, skins, and antlers. Our ancestors used the whole animal and those tradition traditional cultures that still hunt deer as part of a traditional way of life tend to do the same. Deer occur in a wide variety of habitats, mainly forest and tundra with some species able to survive at altitude. Every continent bar Antarctica and Australia have has um, endemic deer. They are able to jump and swim very well and are fast runners, movers, swift to react to threat. Deers are herd animals and herds usually having a dominant male and many females and young. Most species of deer grow antlers that are shed once a year and are used by males as weapons in contests for breeding rights. Large symmetrical antlers can signal good genetic quality and are part of the sexual attractiveness of males to females. The antlers are also used as defense against predators such as wolves. The weight and the power of a stag combined with sharp set of antlers can be more than a match for predators. So the magic of deer is personal power. When you feel powerless or small, imagine a stag with a crown of antlers standing by you, lending you its presence and strength. Deer energy is also great for healing a weak body and for going on astral journeys as the North Norse did in Cedar Magic. Wow, it says symbology. Antler, women with a deer and bow and arrow, hood prints. Not hoof, hood prints. I don't know what that means, but okay. So there we are. And the last one is Colette Byron Reads the Goddess. So let's see which goddess wants to work with us for this first week in May. Secrets. It's the goddess, I gotta see how you say her name, A. Y X. So let's see, maybe they'll tell us how to say her name correctly. Nope. There are times when you must surrender your need to know. Some things open up only when they choose to, not by demand. The mysterious and the unknowable is the domain of the Greek goddess, oh, it's NYX, Nyx. She shows you the veils that may not part for you at this time. Right now, you're meant to keep on your path, trusting the secrets will be revealed as the goddess Nyx decides. Remain true to your intentions and keep on moving forward, remaining curious and open to what you can discover. Allow your need to know the details 
right now to fall away and just be present to all that life is offering. Judge nothing as good or bad and just be with what arises. Soon the treasure you seek will be revealed and it will be better and more valuable than you could have imagined. The goddess Nyx knows what is best for you. Trust and all will be revealed in divine timing. So that's for this for this week. That's a, a good one. Secrets going on. So the alignment message, the goddess of the night, mystery and secrets. Nyx asks you to ask yourself a deep yourself a deep question about denial. What secret have you kept from yourself? Could you be remaining in a relationship that isn't working for you because you won't address the fear of what will happen if you leave or do things differently? Have you been afraid to ask for what you need? Are you in an addictive spiral thinking one more bite of food or one more glass of wine will make you feel better? Whether it is that you refuse, that you are refusing to face the goddess Nick's promises, if you do, you will be amazed at the beauty of your liberation and power. She offers you this alignment task for you to engage in rigorous honesty, self-evaluation, coupled with a fierce self-love and commitment to growth. Be optimistic because the moment you are willing to name your unease, you claim your inner peace, strength, and hope. You can do it. So we had a double message here with the crumbling one and this one, because the crumbling one was saying, what are you holding on to that you know you need to let go of? And this is saying the same thing. You've got the power to make it happen. So, whoops, that was the deer. And now the secrets. So you can't keep secrets from yourself. We know that even if it's something we don't want to go to or through, it's there. And as we look back on other things that we were forced to do in one way or another, we might have been afraid. And once you're through it, you're like, oh my God, why didn't I do it five years before? So this is an important week. It looks like a monumental week, to be honest with you, with happiness, eternal embrace, the crumbling, the messenger, the deer, and Nyx. So I hope you continue with your growth here because it sounds like this week's going to be a doozy. Um, but it doesn't have to be a bad one. Just do your work and keep moving. I have a saying that many of you know. I say it's like being on a roller coaster when we do our work. Keep your arms in and don't get any on you. I'll leave you with that. Whoops.